Today's mission is to trap illegal Mexican. How are we gonna do this? You have to bait them somehow. In case you haven't figured it out already, the guy leading that meeting is Sasha Baron Cohen in disguise. After years of using his characters to play pranks that expose the worst in people, you'd really think folks would be able to see that guy coming by now, but apparently not so much. High five. And that's because the man behind Ali G, Borat, and Bruno has perfected the formula for prank entertainment. If somebody asks you what you are wearing, you will say conjugal. But before Sasha Baron Cohen is into house, why not take a moment to subscribe to the Nerdstalgic channel? In 1996, then up and coming comedian Sasha Baron Cohen created a character named MC Jocelyn Cheadle Hume for a sketch on what would be a short lived comedy called F to F. It was just one of several characters Cohen played on the series, but he would prove to be the key to a life-changing discovery. A chance encounter he had with a group of young skateboarders while in character convinced the comedian that people would accept Cheadle Hume as a real person. Cohen himself later recalled, we were just so excited because here was this new form of comedy that we discovered. Probably it existed and other people had done it, but we'd never discovered it before. This idea of taking a comic character into a real situation. And of course it had been done before. In fact, as far back as 1947, radio producer Alan Funt started experimenting with a format that he would use actors to play pranks on people while secretly recording their reactions. The show was named Candid Microphone. But the following year, it jumped to television and was rechristened Candid Camera. The victims on Candid Camera were average folks and the pranks themselves were generally pretty silly. For example, in one segment, the show sends an actress to a job interview during which she casually mentions to the unsuspecting interviewer that she's being followed by a woman with a monkey on her head. A lady with a monkey on her head? <laughs> Silly. And it was mostly harmless stuff like that. The series would run for over two decades, spawning dozens of imitators, including shows like TV's Bloopers and Practical Jokes, America's Funniest Home Videos, Punked, and Crank Yankers. It would also give birth to a whole new genre of entertainment, the prank show, an idea Baron Cohen seemingly cut his own path to. Only unlike those other shows, Baron Cohen didn't plan to use hidden cameras. He was going to sit his targets down in front of a full television crew and play his pranks in open sight. He refined and renamed the Cheadle Hume character for the British late-night comedy series, The Eleven O'Clock Show, and in 1998, the world met Alistair Leslie Graham, better known as Ali G. Booyakasha, check this out, yo! Unlike the ordinary folks from Candid Camera, the tracksuit-clad Ali G would typically interview celebrities, politicians, and otherwise famous people. The type who could usually stand to be taken down a peg or two, and their mere failure to realize this ridiculous interviewer wasn't real was often enough to get the job done. No diggity! Notable interviewees from over the course of his career include British politician Sir Jacob Rees-Mogg, US politicians like Newt Gingrich, astronaut Buzz Aldrin, megastar Victoria and David Beckham, and future U.S. President Donald Trump. And what is the problem with ice cream? I have no idea. It drips. Okay. And while Ali G's interviews were often just goofy, some of his pranks couldn't be further from the harmless fluff of Funt's show. Segments would often find the so-called hip-hop journalist asking inane questions in a mangled dialect and feigning spectacular ignorance in a way that would lure his unsuspecting interview subjects into exposing their prejudices. Is you very anti-abortions because you yourself was aborted? No, uh, I wasn't aborted. So you ain't never got a whole preggers? This interview is over. Baron Cohen was a master of baiting his targets into saying things they'd regret, or probably should, and he managed to do so repeatedly without ever seeming mean-spirited. The combination of the satirical social commentary and the memorable character made the act so popular that Baron Cohen was named Comedian of the Year only a year later by GQ and he started picking up awards for his portrayal. The world demanded more Ali G, and so, in 2000, he got his own series, The Ali G Show. Booyakasha. Where he not only played the titular character, but also the racist anti-Semitic Kazakh reporter Borat Sagdiev and flamboyantly gay Austrian fashion correspondent Bruno. Are you allowed to date other members of the team or do you have to wait till the season is over? What? Like Ali G, Borat and Bruno were meticulously realized characters who were easy to mistake for real, albeit highly outlandish, people. I like you. Do you like me? I'm not sure. And all three had a unique purpose. Ali G's absurdity, for example, was designed to be juxtaposed against overly serious types of politicians, experts, and businessmen. Borat was used to draw out people's condescension to foreigners, and Bruno highlighted a target's discomfort with homosexuality. So, 
If I were to give you a lap dance right here and now, you're telling me you wouldn't be turned on? Absolutely not. All three of these characters had controversial aspects to them, but like Ali G, they were all also highly successful at conducting hilarious prank interviews that touched on topics of social significance while softly exposing the darker sides of their unwitting subjects. This is partially attributable to tactics that Baron Cohen developed while staging interviews as Ali G. For example, while setting up an interview, Baron Cohen in costume as Ali G would act as a stagehand, while he had another man standing around in a suit and tie who the interview subject would typically conclude was the reporter. It was only moments before cameras rolled, when people were least likely to bail, that the interviewee would learn the man in the suit was in fact the director and Ali G was the reporter. And while in character, Sasha would aim to keep the tone of the interview in a sweet spot. He was careful not to get the subject so frustrated they ended the interview, but he also didn't want things to become so silly they'd start to laugh. Essentially, he was turning the blissfully unaware interviewee into the straight man in a comedy bit. But the continuing success of his characters was mostly because of how real they felt. The verisimilitude of Cohen's performances all but invited his typically pompous interview subjects to assume their superiority to the interviewer. That, in turn, opened the floodgates of condescension and encouraged them to say things they would never say in front of a correspondent they perceived to be smarter, or otherwise more legitimate. It also invited audiences to bond with the characters, as much as, or more than they did with Baron Cohen himself. This relationship made each of them memorable, which in turn allowed the comedian to eventually bring all three to the big screen, starting with 2002's Ali G into House and continuing on to 2006's Borat, Cultural Learnings of America for Make Benefit Glorious Nation of Kazakhstan, 2009's Bruno, and 2020's Borat subsequent movie film, Delivery of Prodigious Bribe to American Regime to Make Benefit Once Glorious Nation of Kazakhstan. Baron Cohen would eventually relocate the series to the US in search of targets who hadn't heard of him yet, and while while he would continue to have success with his fake interviews and public stunts, the more famous he became, the more difficult it got to find interview subjects who couldn't figure out who he was or what was going on. As a result, he gradually transitioned to acting in more conventional film roles over the years, but his influence on the genre he made his name in is almost unrivaled. Almost. Because there is another modern pillar of the genre, which made its debut just six months after Da Ali G's show premiered, and it's one that makes an intriguing contrast to Baron Cohen's take on prank humor, Jackass. Hi, I'm Johnny Knoxville, welcome to Jackass! Whoa! But whereas Baron Cohen spent his time creating socially conscious satire, Johnny Knoxville and the Jackass crew were more about the shock value and pure entertainment. Despite, or perhaps because of, its extreme tonal differences from something like Ali G, Knoxville is now alongside Cohen regarded as one of the godfathers of the modern prank genre. And both men have been widely cited as influences by creators who make prank show content like Eric Andre. You gotta keep him injured or there's no story. <laughs> yeah, 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 come on, bring the camera in. Today, most of that content is appearing in places like YouTube and TikTok, and while it's easy to overgeneralize, a lot of it is increasingly mean-spirited. Internet prank content creators often seem more concerned about finding increasingly outrageous ways to top their competitors than they do about saying anything of substance. So very little of it is as clever as what Sasha Baron Cohen achieved, which isn't really surprising. That's because Sasha Baron Cohen is to the hidden camera prank genre that Charlie Chaplin was to the silent film, or Bruce Lee was to the martial arts movie. He's a one-of-a-kind innovator who perfected his craft, elevated it to an art form that stands the test of time, and will certainly go down as the best there ever was. A great success! So, what do you think? Are you a fan of Sasha Baron Cohen? And who are your other favorite pranksters? Let us know down in the comments below, and if you enjoyed this video, you'll definitely find others you like if you check out the rest of the channel. As always, thank you for subscribing to Nerdstalgic.